So I've been meaning to do a video on this for a while, and as you can see, it was actually posted on the 13th of March 2025, uh, so about two months ago, and it's been open on my PC ever since. Uh, so this is something that really resonates with me, and it's the title is this. So as an engineer, although that part's irrelevant, I'd rather be called stupid than stay silent. This isn't about being stupid, right? This is about being worried about being perceived to be stupid. Uh, have you ever been in a meeting uh, where you feel as though you should know something, but you don't? Uh, so you just sit there silently pretending to know what's going on, but actually you have no clue. That's what this is about. I've done it. You've possibly done it at some point in your career. I've grown out of it now. You know, now if I have a question, I ask it. I don't care. I know exactly what it is that I need to know and what I don't know. And then I ask a question or I find a way of finding it out. Perhaps it's in the documentation somewhere and I go search that out. The point being is, I don't let that gap stay empty. Uh, and to be honest, this is a bit of a tangent. I think we're almost brought up to be like this. You know, we go to school and at school, you're constantly pressured to sort of know things. You're, it, everything is about testing your knowledge. And then you go into workplace and it's not about that. Work isn't about testing how smart you are. It's not even about testing your knowledge. It's about one thing usually, and it's collaborating to achieve some sort of joint goal, right? So actually, the way you should think about work is just a bunch of people communicating with each other to get things done. And if you have questions, if you have gaps in your knowledge, uh, and there's no way for you to fill those not gaps except for asking someone, then ask the person. Uh, something I would say, the worst thing you can probably do is just sit there and stay quiet. And after, and then you still don't know the answer. Like two months later, someone might ask you the same thing and you still don't know the answer. Uh, so it's always best to just do it exactly when you don't know. Having said that, if you're somewhere, if you're working somewhere now and you you feel like you're in this situation and six months has passed and you don't know, just go out and ask someone, to be honest. Um, maybe ask someone you trust, though. I know that's what I used to do. You know, we've all felt like imposters probably at some point. I worked somewhere once. I was quite, I would say, toxic. And, you know, like I said, I would sit there quietly in the meeting. And then after the meeting, I'd actually talk to someone and say, I didn't understand that, actually. Could you explain it to me? Because I was too worried to do it in the meeting, which is what this is all about. Uh, and anyway, this leads me on to Feynman. If you've studied physics, you probably know who Feynman is, or if you've done any sort of STEM subject, you might have heard of Feynman. He did touch multiple different domains to varying degrees. Um, Feynman was really clever. Maybe he was a genius, you know, wh whatever that means. Um, his book, by the way, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, is one of my favorite books ever. And not because it's some like masterpiece, it's just like a really feel good book that I probably read at the right time in my life. I think I was about 15, 16, and it just changed the way I thought. Uh, it really did change my brain, I felt like. I felt like I saw things in a different way. So it's a really great book. And anyway, Feynman was quite unorthodox and quite famous, you know, for asking stupid questions. Obviously, it was different because it was just sort of, he didn't remember certain things. He was still. He had great knowledge. Anyway, here's a quote. So some people think that in the beginning I'm kind of slow and I don't understand the problem because I ask a lot of these dumb, uh, in quotation marks, questions. Is a cathode a plus or a minus? It's a minus, by the way, if you're wondering. Is an iron this way or that way? Um, and that's Richard Feynman, a quote from Richard Feynman. Uh, my favourite aspect of this quote is Feynman's willingness to look dumb. And that leads back to this article. And by the way, these articles weren't connected. I just read this title and it instantly made me think of Feynman. So then I go and find, I just look for a quote from Feynman and we, you know, we end up in a place where it's like Feynman's willingness to look dumb. Uh, and he was willing to look dumb. Now, he was really clever, of course, but so he's probing for some seemingly obvious facts. And if you're a developer, by the way, you've probably done this yourself. I know personally, I've never been that good at remembering specific details. Like if you're not using something every day, your brain loses it, right? So this is like the whole, um, like use it or lose it for example a good ex like a specific technical example if you're a python developer or there's this entire python dependent python specific but like you might forget the implementation of a decorator or the yield keyword you have to go look it up you can't remember it uh, but that's okay you don't have to pretend that you remember how it works you just ask someone or just look it up um 
Yeah, anyway, so, and if this was your first encounter with him, you might start to think this Mr. Feynman wasn't all he's cracked up to be. And by the way, I've got to go off on another tangent because I've got to say this. The key thing with asking questions is it's really understanding what it is you don't understand. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of the people who just like, oh, I don't get any of it. That sometimes to me signifies you're not really even trying. You're not trying to work things out. The way you really should do it is like, okay, I understand this bit, but I'm really not understanding this part here. Um, that's the way you should do it. And if you don't understand something, look, it is what it is, right? If you don't understand the whole thing, it is what it is. But at least try to understand, I would say, and then try and recognize which parts you don't understand or which what information you're missing to help you get to a point where you understand. I guess that's a skill in itself, but uh, yeah. So, and then Feynman goes on to say, you know, and later when the guy's in the middle of a bunch of equations, he'll say something and I'll say, wait a minute, there's an error, that can't be right. The guy looks at his equations and sure enough, after a while, he f finds a mistake and wonders how the hell did this guy, who hardly understood the beginning, find a mistake in this mess of these equations. And the reality is, there's two things, obviously, Feynman wasn't stupid, he was clever, but he knew what he didn't know. And that's what this comes down to. And yeah, I actually also want to say there's like another side to this, going back to, you know, the work environment and realizing that you're all there to just collaborate and build something that works, right? That's your goal. Uh, I think it's also your sort of responsibility to maybe a lesser degree if you're a senior to recognize when other people are doing this. I've definitely done this. I have worked with juniors and I've been like, I know for a fact that he's been assigned a ticket, but I know he doesn't know what he needs to do, but I also know he's too scared to basically ask the question in front of everyone. And at that point, you know, go. And, I would go and send them a message saying, do you need any help? I'm happy to explain that ticket to you. Um, now, obviously it would be better if they just got over the hump and said, I don't exactly understand. Uh, but, you know, if you have the ability to spot it, then definitely use that skill as well. Um, I guess that's the other side of the coin. Uh, so the advice here is not be willing to look dumb, uh, this author says. I'll leave both links in the description, by the way. Rather, you should look, you should think of the willingness to look dumb as a wager. And like all speculative in endeavors with probabilistic returns, there's a chance that you will come out on top. Quite an interesting way of viewing it, actually. Uh, and what they're saying is by you know, knowing exactly which part you don't know, you're giving yourself the ammunition to now understand the next bit. And by the way, that's why I quite like talking out loud, especially like through problems or writing them down, because quite often when you write something down or you speak about it and try to articulate it, it's much more simple to actually recognize which, where your gaps in your knowledge actually are. And von Neumann did this a lot. And I, I love von Neumann. I think von Neumann John von Neumann, that is, or Janos, I think he's often called, uh, Janos. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's like the smartest person that's ever lived, but obviously that's a bit of a, can't really back that up. Uh, it's amazing how far we've gone from just reading the title. It goes to show, um, uh, I like to ramble. <laughs> so if you like listening to me ramble, leave a like and subscribe. And, you know, please give me the benefit of the doubt because, you know, I'm just doing this all in a single take. So if I say something stupid, apologies. Uh, so this, he then goes on to say, and I'm, we're not going to read the whole article, I might just suddenly abruptly end it, uh, but he goes on to say, letting myself be vulnerable and ask stupid question, questions actually helped me grow in my engineering career. I think this is inevitable. This is like, <laughs> you're just filling in your gaps faster, and then you're becoming more confident to communicate with people. And then people, when you ask the question, you're more engaged and I just can't think of any real negatives unless you're re unless you're literally asking a question and I'm sat there as another developer thinking, how on earth have you worked here for six months without knowing that? If you don't know that, that means you've not you don't understand even what your job has been in the last six months. Maybe then you should be worried. But generally speaking, asking questions is a good thing. Uh, I feel like I went on a tangent there, but we're going to move on. I'm not always going to address every point, you know. A lot of this is just sort of uh, extreme examples, like for fun. Uh, as time passed, here's a quote, I realized I couldn't know everything, especially on a platform of this scale. This is another thing which is probably inevitable if you're on a big platform, but this is where you almost have to make like use of how your brain actually works. Firstly, write documentation. You might not be able to remember everything, but your brain is actually pretty good at remembering where you read the information, where you got the information from. So write documentation. 
uh, and you might not remember like the specific implementation or something, but you might remember exactly where you can get that piece of information. So always write docs if you think that you, you're likely to forget something. Uh, keep links, blogs, articles, whatever, you know, whatever it is you use, just, um, yeah, don't beat yourself up for not remembering how every single detail of something works. And if you forget, just ask, you know, I've, even where I'm working now, like for a year, I sometimes ask stupid questions because when you're doing something every day on autopilot and you don't ever think about it, you're not like explicitly committing it to memory. You might just forget. Um, yeah. You know, for example, like which branch you deploy, like where, where are you supposed to deploy, which branch are you supposed to deploy to? Like, oh, I've forgotten. I do this every single day. And then I've just wiped this all and I've forgotten what it's called because it's just always there. Uh, anyway, what happens if you don't let yourself feel vulnerable? Let us see. I think I might stop there. There's so much more we could cover. Of course, there always is. There's many tangents we could go off of. And I actually think we may have drawn a conclusion that, you know, the key thing you should try and do at work is be honest to yourself, be engaged, and just realize what it is you don't know, which in itself is a skill, of course. It can be difficult to do that. But you really have to understand what am I, what information am I missing in order to complete this task I'm trying to do to collaborate with a group of people to get a thing done. They're not testing me. They're not trying to work out how smart I am. They just want me to do this thing as quickly as possible, preferably, you know, however many points on the ticket, get the ticket done in that amount of time. That's what they care about. They don't care how smart you are. Um, anyway, I will stop there. Hopefully I wasn't too incoherent. Hopefully that made sense. Um, Leave a like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.